Hey there, and welcome to Copenhagen Castrop Airport for another trip report. It's 7 a.m. here, and I've just arrived on an overnight flight from Montreal with Air Canada. Here in Copenhagen, I have a connection time of 70 minutes before I catch a 35 minute flight with SAS up to Gothenburg on board one of their ATR 72600s that's operated by XFly. Thankfully, my first flight was on time, so I should have no problem making this connection. Copenhagen Airport is divided into two terminals, T2 and T3, which share a common airside passenger concourse as well as arrivals hall. The airside portion of the terminals is separated into the A, B, C, D, E, and F piers, with Pier C, where I arrived today, used mostly for flights outside of the Schengen area. After arriving on Pier C, I cleared passport control, and from there, it's a quick and easy 5 minute walk down to my gate on the E pier. My flight to Gothenburg is using gate E7 this morning, which is a remote stand gate, so we'll be bussed out to the aircraft. Boarding is set to begin at 7.50 am, 20 minutes before departure. SAS boards their flights by assigned group number, and on this flight, groups A and B are for priority boarding, which includes SAS Euro Bonus Gold and Diamond members, Star Alliance Gold members, and travelers on an SAS Plus ticket. Groups D and E are for travelers on an SAS Go Smart or Go Light fare with a prepaid carry-on bag. And lastly, Group F is for travelers on an SAS Go Light fare with no carry-on bag. At the end of it all, since we're boarding the aircraft by bus today, the groups don't really mean a whole lot. The ride over to our aircraft was only about 5 minutes, where we finally got our first look at the plane for today's flight. This short flight between Denmark and Sweden will be on board this 10.5 year old ATR 72 600 that started its life in December 2012, flying around India for Jet Airways, before being transferred to Nordica in December 2019, where it now operates under the XFly brand. SAS has seven of this aircraft type in their fleet, all operated under a lease agreement by XFly. First thoughts before we step inside, this aircraft looks shockingly clean, like it's just rolled off the factory floor. Heading inside, the same comment applies here, where it's super clean and fresh feeling. The interior design is simple and not terribly colorful, but I can't say I expected more from a Scandinavian airline. The seats have a grey leather surface with no adjustable headrest and a slimline, rather cheap looking design, but for such a short flight, it works just fine. This aircraft is in an all-economy class configuration with 70 identical seats in a 2-2 layout. I'm booked in seat 2A for today's flight, which is a window seat in the second row of the cabin. As you likely noticed, we boarded the aircraft from the rear, as that's the only boarding door on board. The front of the aircraft houses the cargo hold, in between where I'm sitting and the cockpit. Settling into my seat, first thoughts are that it's quite firm, but the whole seat area is crazy clean and well kept. Taking a look around my seat, the legroom is pretty tight, and at my height of 5 foot 10, I have just a couple inches of knee room to spare. Looking at the floor, for my window seat, there's a chair leg dead in the middle, which doesn't make it very easy to store items under the seat in front without occupying my neighbor's stowage space. Surprisingly, however, for such a small plane, the overhead bins were able to accommodate lots of carry-on luggage, even fitting standard size rollerboard bags without issue. Taking a look at the seat back in front, at the top we have a pocket for storing the provided reading materials. Seeing what we have here, there's an air sickness bag, the safety information card for the ATR 72600, and a menu for the onboard service. In the purchase menu, we have drinks including alcohol, snacks, and light meals. In terms of prices, a bottle of water will run you €3.50, Euro while a gin and tonic is €10. Euro. Snacks are around €3 to €4, Euro, and light meals start at €5. Euro. Also at the top of the seat back on the side, we have a small hook for hanging your jacket. Below the literature pouch, we have a tray table which flips out for use and is mounted on rails such that it's adjustable. Below the tray table, we have a mesh pouch closer to the floor for storing your own items. Unfortunately, there is no in-seat power available at these seats, with no USB or AC charging outlets. Looking at the overhead panel above the seat, we have a personal reading light for each seat, along with a personal adjustable air vent. 
By far the best feature of seat 2A, the great view of this propeller engine. After starting up the engines five minutes past our scheduled departure time, we were given a 40 minute delay before being able to begin our taxi to the runway for takeoff. Climbing away from Copenhagen, our expected flight time to Gothenburg is just 35 minutes. The weather in both Copenhagen and Gothenburg today is cloudy with some rain, but I've still got some nice views of the Danish countryside down below. Heading to the back of the aircraft, there's one lavatory on board for all passengers. Stepping inside, it is very small, but that's not uncommon for small planes like these. They do have running water and a sink however, and soaps are provided as well. This may not seem noteworthy, but similarly sized planes like the more common Bombardier Q400 don't have sinks and running water in the bathrooms. As I head back to my seat, the cabin crew are working their way down the aisle with a beverage service. On SAS flights within Europe, only coffee and tea are complimentary, with all other items needing to be purchased from the onboard menu. That being said, given that we were delayed almost an hour leaving Copenhagen, the crew are offering water free of charge as well. Being a propeller plane, there is more vibration and noise on board than most jet aircraft, but it is bearable for a short flight. Beginning our descent towards a very grim looking Gothenburg, it's a little more dreary here than the Copenhagen that we left behind. Gothenburg Landvetter Airport consists of one central terminal building for both domestic and international flights. Since Sweden and Denmark are both EU countries, there's no passport control after arrival from Copenhagen, so I'm headed straight to baggage claim.
Landvetter Airport is located 20 kilometers southeast of the city center and is the second largest airport in Sweden. It's connected to Gothenburg by several shuttle services, one of which is Flygbosarna that I'll be using today. The cost to travel from the airport to the Niels Ericsson terminal downtown is 129 Swedish krona, or about 12 US dollars. There's a ticket machine in the baggage claim area, or you can buy them online. Thanks for joining me for this trip report, and I hope you enjoyed it. I was pleasantly surprised by SAS's ATR-72s, which have a super clean and modern feeling cabin. The onboard service was limited, but for such a short flight, you can't expect much more. The transfer process in Copenhagen from an Air Canada to an SAS flight was super simple, and despite the delay, this was overall a quick and easy journey.